Peace and Pow Wow, Drop Nation, what it do, man? Con Drop, man, what it do, man? I really miss y'all. We back in here, man. We're gonna do it. We're gonna get it like it's the first time. You know what I mean? Put the energy out. You know what I mean? Feel the wave, man. Keep the water flowing. I just wanna send a quick, you know what I'm saying? S send some a hop. First and foremost, man, I gotta send us a hop to Aqua V, man. Vanessa Perkins, man, what it do? We love you. We with you. The sister had a car accident or a van accident, man. She put all her money up, man, to get a beautiful van that she can, you know, start living out of because she's a grandmother in Louisiana. As, as you know, Sister V came and took care of Hawa Stu and K Stu and Mario and Shalise, you know what I mean, had that camper or, you know, uh, just, a, just a nice refuge, man. So when the tribe went up, they were always taken care of because Sister V had refuge, man, all praise to Hawa. So this sister put you know, that same idea and say, you know, I want a traveling van, you know what I mean? As a grandmother, left her grandkids, loves her grandkids, loves her babies. Went on, back home to her babies after Utah, six, seven months. She's like, man, I need to get back on the road. So she put the van together. She called it the Green Dragon, man. Free Phineas, you know. And uh, the last day she went to an RTR park, um, you know, just learning how to, you know, out of van living, you know, just getting experience to share with the tribe. You know, she started her show called On the Road Again. Um, and the last day she was leaving, she hit some ice and the van flipped over, hit a ditch. All praise the most high. The sister didn't get hurt at all. I mean, you know, some soreness, some, a little scrape, man, but she, she got out that car, she got help. You know what I'm saying? The most high sent help. Someone came, put her over. They shoulders and carried her out that van, man. And, uh, you know, she was taken care of, man, the whole time. So all praise the most high. Thank you to all the tribe that's been looking out for Aqua V. And we'll be putting up a GoFundMe just for Aqua V to get her back in that van on the road again, man. So Aqua V, we love you. We appreciate your tenacity, your ability just to say, man, I got to go. Let, let me show them how it's done, man. And I look forward to all the experience that you gained. You know what I'm saying, of out of van living because that's really freedom. When she was out there, she's like, you know what I'm saying, the, the earth is my backyard. You know what I mean? The world is my backyard, man. So all praise the most high, the sister's safe. Everything that is replaceable, we can replace. So look out for that GoFundMe. Peace and power to all the tribe dropping their shows out. Look out for their GoFundMe's to support their dreams, their visions. This is what we, you know what I'm saying, Th this is who we are, man. We got to support each other. This, this has to be an organism that feeds each other, man. And, if it's one or two, three or four, we're doing our job. All praise a while. Let's go. So you know this book of Joshua been breaking it down. It's been breaking it all the way down. It's been giving us a dragonfly perspective of this Moshe business, man. So, you know, now we're looking at Moshe through 360 degree. You know what I mean? Dragonfly perspective, man. Round table, knights, swords, Templar perspective, man. Love to the temp. And, uh, you know, based on the book of Jasher, man, how I saw we got Moses, what, uh, at the age of 27, becomes the king of Cush, reigns as the king of Cush for 40 years after he gets exiled out of Egypt. You know what I mean? That whole situation, we got that. Reigns as the king of Cush. All right? So now he's 66, 67. All right? So let's pick up in the story. You know, we're going to kind of, you know, do some belly flopping, but I want to kind of keep consistent in seeing where... This perspective is taking us with Moshe, and let's start applying that back to our chronology, back to our timelines, back to Preston John, man. Preston John, we on your ass, man. We on your ass, Preston John. We right on his ass, man. And once we get, you know what I mean, that clarity, you ain't got to look for Preston John. When you talk about the function, it will find you. It will find you. Let's go. Yeah, I'm in the book of Jasher, Jasher, Yashar, Hawashar. Chapter 76, man. Where we at? Where we at, man? Oh, there we go. Chapter 76. Let's get it. And stay healthy, man. It's getting, you know, cold and hot and cold. I know you in LA. It's hard just to, I mean, just, yeah, CJ Battle told y'all, man. It ain't that hard when you transition to vegan. Love to ship candy, man. Check out that Zion cooking, man. Check her out on IG. Man, you know, I've been about two months, man, no meat. You know what I mean? Two months, man. So I never thought I could do it. But it's getting easier, man, when you start to apply other things in your ingredients, you know, with the, you know. You know, look, man, just check out Chef Candy's Zion cooking. All right. <laughs> Dropping on Thursdays at 8. Let's go. Chapter 76. And Moshe, the son of Amram, 
was still king in the land of Kush in those days, man. So love to Sister Jackie who broke down when I said, who is his father? Amram. All right. So what does this mean? How, how do we apply that in the timelines? How do we, you know, take this back to David? Uh, uh, which one is it? Uh, Anand ben David. Love to the Templar who broke that down live, man. Anand ben David. And he got a great chronology, a great timeline he's putting together with that. Also love to hire Mark for that Arboroth 1320, getting that classroom. Let's go. And Moshe, son of Amram, was still king in the land of Cush in those days, and he prospered in his kingdom, and he conducted the government of the children of Cush in justice, in righteousness, and in integrity. And in all the children of Cush loved Moshe all the days that he reigned over them. All right, so the children of Cush love Moshe all the days, right? So you have Egypt, Egyptians, Mitzrayim, Mitzri, right? Then you got the Hebrews, Ibri, right? And then you got Cush. Now Moses makes this alliance with Cush, but it lasts for 40 years. And he does all this to do what? To train up. Now he's trained up as the king of Cush. All right, so by the time he meets uh, Zipporah and gets married to the Midian and all that, He's been king of Kush for 40 years, training up just to do what? Free you. Moses is training up as a king to free you. Now, this is a king with a sword and armor. So you only got a picture of Moshe with a, uh, you know, garment and a staff. That's, that's, that's one look. <laughs> that's one look. There's another look, too. So let's get all perspectives going. And let's combine this with Joshua. You know what I mean? Let's go. And all the children of Cush love Moshe. All the children of Cush love Moshe. All the days that he reigned over them. And all the inhabitants of the land of Cush were greatly afraid of him. And in the 40th year of the reign of Moshe over Cush, Moshe was sitting on the royal throne with Adoniah. So remember, he had this wifey he took when he became king of Cush, right? named Adoniah, but she was previously the wife of Kikianus. All right, so Kikianus, you know what I mean, who I believe he got killed, you know what I mean, and then Moses became the king of Cush or whatever that happened, you know what I mean. So he took Kikianus, well, they gave him one of his, one of Kikianus' main things, all right. But Moses, because of the, you know, command, like, you know, don't touch none of these daughters of Canaan, he never touched Adoniah. All right, so 40 years went by, and he ain't touched this woman. So, of course, she mad. He ain't touched her in 40 years. The woman is mad. Okay, so let's go. And Adoniah, the queen, said before the king and princess, so now she going to bust him out. Now she going to bust Moses all the way down. Let's go. What is this thing which you, the children of Cush, have done for this long time? Surely you know that for 40 years... <clears throat> for 40 years that this man has reigned over Cush, he has not approached me, nor has he served the gods of the children of Cush. So he ain't served the hijacks. You know what I mean? He ain't served no idols. He ain't served the gods of Cush. All right. He has not approached me. Now, therefore, hear, O children of Cush, and let this man no more reign over you as he is not of our flesh so she's telling him straight up you ain't of our flesh you don't serve our gods and you ain't even you know what i mean you ain't even approach me man she's busting him out <laughs> now therefore here O children of kush let this man no more reign over you as he is not of our flesh chapter uh, verse 7 chapter 76 behold menacruz my son is grown up. Let him reign over you. Let him reign over you, for it is better for you to serve the son of your Lord than to serve a stranger, slave of the king of Mitzrayim. And all the people and nobles of the children of Cush heard the words which Adoniah the queen had spoken in their ears. And all the people were preparing unto the evening, and in the morning they rose up early and made Menachrus son of Kikianus 
So this was Kikianus' boy with the same woman before Kikianus died. Right? And they gave him this woman who already had a son with this. You know what I mean? So it was all it was all hijacked, man. Let's go. Alright, so they made Menacruz Adoniah, Moses' you know, Cushite wife, his her son. And in verse 10, and all the children of Cush were afraid to stretch forth their hand against Moshe, so they didn't want to roll up on Moses now. Nah, nah. For Hawa was with Moses, and the children of Cush remembered the oath which they swore unto Moshe. Therefore they did no harm to him. But the children of Cush gave many presents to Moses. So they hooked him up. He said, man, you got to go, Moshe. Man, we love you, though, man, but you know the situation, man. But 40 years you held us down. We're going to hook you up. We're going to give you some presents and stuff. And they sent him from them with great honor. So he got an honorable discharge as the king of Cush. Let's go. So Moses went forth from the land of Cush and went home and ceased to reign over Cush. And Moshe was 66 years old when he went out of the land of Cush. Now, this is before he came to free you. You know what I mean? So you can never doubt somebody's pattern or design, right? You might be an Israelite. You're like, man, Moses done forgot about us, man. Yeah, he, he done got hijacked with Cush in there, man. Moses, man, he over there, king of Cush. I thought he was a Levite, man. And they don't know what he's doing, right? So they don't know if he's with this woman or not. So they're like, man, he over there with this Cushite woman getting it in, man. You know what I mean? He over there serving false gods, man. You know they talking mad. You know what I mean? Mad donkey on Moses, man. But they don't know. What you don't know, it's a lesson. What you don't know, you don't know. So don't pretend to know. Because the Most High, for 40 years, was just training Moses up to get ready for the goal, for the target. And if you don't know the target, you can't doubt the most high what somebody else is doing. Focus on you. Let go. You got to get to the finish line. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, man. So they remembered the oath they had with Moses and the children of Cush remembered. All right. Therefore, they did no harm. But they gave him presents, so Moses left that land, and he ceased to reign. He's 66 years old when he went out of the land of Cush, for the thing was from Hawa. For the period had arrived which he had appointed in the days of old. It was already appointed. Let's go. To bring forth Israel from the affliction of the children of Ham. So this is the whole point. Freedom, man. Freedom. So Moses went to Midian. Now listen up. I'm in verse 13. For he was afraid to return to Egypt on account of Pharaoh. So he went to Midian, not Egypt. But let's go. <laughs> so he was afraid to return to Mitzrayim on account of Pharaoh. And he went and sat at a well of water in Midian. And the seven daughters of Rehuel, the Median, the Medianite, went out to feed their father's flock. So now you're going to pick it up like the Prince of Egypt and Jethro, that whole character, right? But instead they're calling this guy Rehuel, not Jethro, Rehuel, all right? So the father of Zipporah is Rehuel, according to the Sefer, Book of Deshar, chapter 76. So... Here comes this, you know, watering, shepherd, you know, same story you heard. But here's the twist, though. Here's the twist. And the seven daughters of Reuel, the Midianite, all right, went out to feed their father's flock. And they came to the well and drew water to water their father's flock. So the shepherds of Midian came and drove them away. And Moshe rose up and helped them water the flock. All right, you heard that part, right? Listen up. Verse 16, so the shepherds of Midian came and drove them away. Moses rose up to help them. 17, and they came home to their father Reuel and told him what Moses did for them. 
And they said, a Mitzri man has delivered us from the hands of the shepherd. An Egyptian, right? Okay. Has delivered us from the hands of the shepherds. He drew up water for us and watered the flock. All right, man. Sounds like a good thing, right? Come on. He drew up water for us and watered the flock. And Reuel said to his daughters, and where is he? Wherefore you have left this man? And Raoul sent for him and fetched him and brought him home and he ate bread with him. All right, you broke bread. He's hooking him up. You helped my daughters out. You watered the flock. You drew water out the well, Moshe. Here's some bread, man. Tell me your story. Now here's where it gets absolutely interesting. And you ain't, this is could not at all what the story, <laughs> what you hear the story is. Let's go. Let's get our perspective on. Verse 21, and Moshe related to Reuel that he had fled from Egypt and that he had reigned 40 years over Cush and that they afterwards had taken the government from him and he sent him away in peace with honor and with presence. And in, when Reuel had heard the words of Moshe, listen up, Right? Because you think he's going to hook him up for helping his daughter out, his daughters out, getting the flock, water in the flock, getting the well out the water, right? And when Reuel had heard the words of Moshe, Reuel said within himself, I will put this man into the prison. Now, what part of the story is this? Moses just helped his daughters water the flock. And now he's saying, man, because of what I just heard, I'm going to put you in prison. I don't care what you did for my daughters. Why, Jethro? <laughs> Why, Why Reuel? What's the deal, Reuel? And when Reuel had heard the words of Moshe, Reuel said within himself, I will put this man into the prison house, whereby I will put, whereby I shall conciliate the children of Cush. So I'm going to help them out. I'm going to form an alliance with Cush and I'm going to put Moses in prison. Man, cold gang. I shall conciliate the children of Cush for he has fled from them and they took and put him into prison and Moses was in prison 10 years. Now let's add this up in your timeline. Moses 18, when he gets into the beef with the Pharaoh's servant, the Mitzrayim, the Egyptian, he kills him because the Egyptian literally went into the house of a Hebrew man, tied the Hebrew man up, took his woman in front of him in his presence and was trying to slaughter the man, the Hebrew man. The Egyptian was trying to slaughter the Hebrew man whose wife he had just took in his presence. And he ran to Moses and Moses slayed the Egyptian because obviously... I think we have a law against somebody breaking in your house, taking your wife, and literally raping her in front of you, and then trying to kill you. So I think Moses was within the law to put this man down. I mean, what do you think? What's street justice to you? You know what I mean? So he flees out of e Egypt. All right, so this is the fleeing part. 27 becomes King of Cush, reigns 40 years. 66, 67, he's out of there. Now he gets, now he helps this this man's daughters <coughs> and the man puts him in prison for 10 years man we're getting it out the book of Jasher man all right let's go what up man get my alcohol alive. get suited up we about to make this dismount being a hop to the tribe, man. Y'all been surfing the wave live with us, man. We've been live for like two months, five nights a week. But we're really live. You know, we, we have shows every day. So come surf the wave, man. Enjoy the family, the Shabbata. Some you may know, some you don't. All right, but we, we're, we're building. This is the ether, you know what I mean? Like any other wave, like I said, you the water comes to the shore. You, you go get that ether, you come back with a, a stronger wave, right? You keep it going waves keep you know what i mean you, you can't just be one wave you have to be the entire ocean 
You can't just be one wave. You have to be the entire ocean, man. Surf the wave challenge. Let's go. And they took and put Moses into prison. And Moses was in prison 10 years. And while Moses was in prison, Zipporah, the daughter of Reuel, took pity over him and supported him with bread and water all the time. So now it's the flip-flop of what you see in the Prince of Egypt when Zipporah is the slave girl and Moses helps her escape, you know what I mean? Now Moses is the slave boy, but he's 66 going on 70 and he's in prison for 10 years and Zipporah, Zipporah, the daughter who, who he helped, now you gotta think, man, you know. He's 66 when he helps these daughters. How old is his daughters at this time, man? You know, I don't know, man, but she's helping him out. Let's go. <laughs> let's, let's pick up the story, chapter 76. Let's get it for the dismount. So Zipporah, the daughter of Reuel, took pity over him and supported him with bread and water all the time. She looked out. And all the children of Israel were yet in the land of Egypt serving Mitzrayim in all manner of hard work. And the hand of Mitzrayim continued in severity over the children of Israel in those days. And at that time, Hawah smote Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he afflicted with the plague of leprosy from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Owing the cruel treatment of the children of Israel was the plague at the time from Hawah upon Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So did you know in, the, in your processing of Moshe that while Pharaoh is, is getting these plagues and it's, you're thinking Moses is right there at that time saying, let my people go. Pharaoh is already getting these plagues while Moses is in jail for 10 years, who was just king of Cush for 40 years, fighting with a sword and armor. I'm talking knights. Let's go. Priest king. Dragon King. And all the children of Israel were yet in the land of Egypt, serving Egypt in all manner of hard work. And the hand of Egypt continued in severity over the children of Israel. And at that time, Hawa smote Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he afflicted with the plague of leprosy, man. All right. Leprosy. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. So he became what? White. Right? All right. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, owing the cruel treatment of the children of Israel. All right. For Hawah had hearkened to the prayer of his people, the children of Israel, and their cry reached him on account of their hard work. Still his anger did not turn from them. So they still had to keep getting, you know, get that alchemy, man. They had to get that pressure. They had to continue getting that pressure put on them. And the hand of Pharaoh was still stretched out against the children of Israel. And Pharaoh hardened his neck before Hawa, And he increased his yoke over the children of Israel and embittered their lives with all manner of hard work. And when Hawa had inflicted the plague upon Pharaoh, king of Egypt, he asked his wise men and sorcerers to cure him. And his wise men and sorcerers said unto him that if the blood of little children were put into the wounds, he would be healed. This is the nonsense going on in Egypt. In order to heal your leprosy, In order to heal, to heal your leprosy, Pharaoh, we need to go kill some infants. And the blood of these infants will heal you. One man. Let's go. And his wise man and sorcerer said to him that if the blood of little children were put into the wounds, he would be healed. And Pharaoh hearkened to him and sent his, mis his, his ministers. <clears throat> to Goshen to the children of Israel to take their little children so now you have the little children being taken but it's because he's leprous and he wants their blood 
to cure his leprosy. And, the, and Pharaoh's ministers went and took the infants of the children of Israel, went and took the infants of the children of Israel, and they brought them to Pharaoh daily, man. And each day, each and a child each day, and physicians killed them and applied them to the plague. Thus did all they did all the, the days. And the number of children which Pharaoh slew was 375. But Hawah hearkened not to the physicians of the king of Mitzrayim, and the plague went on mightily. And Pharaoh was 10 years afflicted with that plague. 10 years Moses in jail. 10 years Pharaoh got the plague. 10 years Moses is in prison. 10 years Pharaoh got the plague. Let's go. And still the heart of Pharaoh was more hardened against the children of Israel. And at the end of 10 years, Hawa continued to inflict Pharaoh with destructive plagues. And Hawa smote him with a bad tumor and sickness at the stomach. And that plague turned to a severe boil. And at that time, the two ministers of Pharaoh came from the land of Goshen, where all the children of Israel were, and went to the house of Pharaoh and said to him, We have seen the children of Israel slacken in their work and negligent in their labor. And when Pharaoh heard these words, his ministers, his anger was kindled against the children of Israel exceedingly, for he was grievely or greatly grieved at this bodily pain. For he knew and said now, that the children of Israel know that I am ill, they turn and scoff at us. Now therefore harness my chariot for me, and I will betake myself to Goshen, and I will see the scoff of the children of Israel with which they deriding, are deriding me. So his servants harnessed the, ch the chariot for him, and they took and made him ride upon the horse. He was not able to ride of himself. And he took with him ten horsemen and ten footmen, and, when the children of Is and went to the children of Israel to Goshen. And when they had come to the border of Mitzrayim, the king's horse passed into the narrow place, elevated into the hollow part of the vineyard, fenced on both sides, the low plain country being on the either side, on the other side, and the children, the horses ran rapidly in that place and pressed each other, and the horses pressed the king's horse, and the king's horse fell into the low plain while the king was riding upon it, and when he fell, the chariot turned over the king's face, and the horse lay upon the king, and the king cried out, for his flesh was very sore, and the flesh of the king was torn for him, and his bones were broken, and he could not ride. For this thing was from Hawa to him, for Hawa had heard the cries of his people, the children of Israel, and their affliction. And his servants carried him upon their shoulder a little at a time, and they brought him back to Mitzrayim, and the horsemen who were with him came also back to, to Egypt. And they placed him in his bed, and the king knew that the end was come to die. So Aparanith, the queen, his woman, came and cried before the king, and the king wept a great weeping with her. And all his nobles and servants came on a day and saw the king in that affliction, and weeping and a great weeping with him. And the princes of the kings and all his counselors advised the king to cause one to reign in his stead in the land, whomsoever he should choose from his sons. And the king had three sons and two daughters with Aparanith, the queen, his woman, had bore to him, besides the king's children of the concubines. And there, and there were their names, the firstborn, Athri, the second, Adakam, and the third, Moriah, <laughs> like Moron, right? And their sister's name was Bathia and Akuzi. And Athri, the firstborn, was an idiot. <laughs> Athri, the firstborn, was an idiot. Uh, precipitate and hurried in his words. And Atticon was a cunning and wise man, and knowing in all the wisdom of Mitzrayim, but of unseemingly aspect, thick in flesh, and very short in stature. So he was, you know, big boned and short. His, his height was one cubit, so that must be very short. Right? <laughs> and when the king saw Atticon, his son intelligent and wise in all things, the king resolved that he should be king in his stead after his death. And he took for a woman, Gedu Da, daughter of Abelo. And he was ten years old, and she bore unto him four sons. And he afterwards went and took three women, and begat eight sons and three daughters. 
and the disorder greatly prevailed over the king, and his flesh stank like the flesh of a carcass cast upon the field in summertime during the heat of the sun. <laughs> Damn, man, he was, he, he was pretty funky, man. I mean, look how they broke this down. <laughs> and his flesh stank like the flesh of a carcass cast in the field in summertime during the heat of the sun. Damn. And when the king saw that his sickness had greatly strengthened itself over him, he ordained his son Adakon to be brought to him, and they made him king over the land in his place. And at the end of three years, the king died in shame, disgrace, and disgust, and his servants carried him and buried him in the scepter of the kings of Egypt in Soan, Mitzrayim. But they embalmed him not, as was usual with the kings, for his flesh was putrid, and they could not approach to embalm him on account of the stench. So they buried him in haste, for this evil was from Hawa to him, and Hawa had requited him evil for evil, which in his days he had done to Israel. And he died with terror and with shame, and his son Atticon reigned in his place, man. And that's the end of the book of Jashar, man. You see, this was a long one. <laughs> see, this was a long one, man. We, we came a long way with this one, man. You know what I mean? Started here, came here, all the way over, man. But we're going to keep it going, man. I want to, uh, next time, kind of jump ahead and get to, uh, they're going to go into Atticon. You know what I mean? I want to jump right into chapter 79, man. And in those days, Moshe was feeding the flock of Ra'uel, the Midian, the Midianite, his father-in-law. So, again, Ra'uel is Jethro. But this Jethro, this Ra'uel, put his ass in jail for 10 years. And I want to see how we picked that up beyond the wilderness of Sion, of, or the wilderness of sin. And the stick which he took from his father-in-law was in his hand, and it came to pass that a kid of goats strayed from the flock, and Moshe pursued it, and it came to the mountain of Elohim to Korev. And when he came to Korev, Hawa appeared there unto him in the bush, and he found the bush burning with fire. But the fire had no power over the bush to consume it, and Moshe was greatly astonished at this sight. Wherefore the bush was not consumed, and he approached to see this mighty thing, and Hawa called unto Moshe out of the fire, and commanded him to go down to Mitzrayim, to Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, to send the children of Israel from his service. And Hawa said unto Moshe, Go, return to Egypt, for all those men who sought your life are dead, and you shall speak unto Pharaoh to send forth the children of Israel from this land. We'll pick it up there, man. We'll see where we go. We'll see how we do and how we go, man. You know what I mean? I love y'all, man. Much of high. I'm just grateful to be back. You know what I mean? Just to, you know what I mean, continue this wave going. I'm grateful to get past all the hurdles we got past, all the support, all the great comments. You know what I'm saying? I might not have all the time to uh, get back all the time, but you see, man, four, five, six hours a night, man, you already know, you know what I mean? So we over here working for you. We're over here trying to set up, you know, a nice road, a nice path so that as we transition out of all this social media stuff, we know we're defined, you know what I'm saying? We know we still got a spot, you know what I mean? Love to natural by law, man. We still got a spot, man, in the ether to put our thoughts together, man, to crystallize, to energize with each other, man. Much of high shot by that. Surf the wave, man. Shabbat Shalom. Y'all keep zoning, man. Zion up. Zion is your Zion. Zion is your Zion. In real time, man. Much a hop to y'all, man. Come surf the wave live, man. You know where to find us. Shabbat Shalom.